Hello and welcome again to Phillips Cop for another walk in the Fainboss. It's late April and many plants have finished their flowering for the season and will wait until the spring arrives before they start growing again. There's a whole group of plants for which late autumn, early winter is their main flowering season. And one of the most beautiful of those are the oxalis, small bulbous plants which flower mainly from March through to about August. A number of different species in the Fainboss and we're going to look at some of those today on this walk. The genus Alxalis is really easy to recognise. The flowers themselves are really quite distinctive in that they have these usual five petals and then a tube with a calyx holding the tube and then you find them on these stalks either singly or sometimes grouped in a cluster at the top. But the thing that really makes Oxalis distinctive and why you shouldn't confuse it with other genera are the leaves and they are cons almost always have three leaflets from a single leaf and often at ground level or near ground level. Beneath there there'll be a little bulb and they spread very easily by these bulbs. But the thing that makes Oxalis quite unique is actually what goes on inside that tube. For Oxalis have a condition known as heterostyly. And heterostyly is where the, there are different levels for the stamens and the style between plants so that they can encourage cross-pollination. And in Oxalis this is particularly interesting because it's actually three different levels. So you'll get the top level, a middle level and a bottom level. And the style and stamens can be at any of those levels. So you'll get two levels for the stamens, they might be at the top and the bottom and then you'll get the style in the middle or you might get the styles at the top and then the stamens middle and bottom or the styles at the bottom and the stamens at the middle and the top. So you get three different morphs within each species of Oxalis. Here we have Oxalis livida. Oxalis livida is uh, quite easily recognised for the species within the Clain River Mountains because of its bright pink flowers that are held in clusters at the top of the peduncle of a flowering stalk. So here you can see that you've got one of the flowers open and then there's lots of other buds on the same stalk. It also has a very clear stem to it and you can see that this, as the stem develops you get different peduncles coming up off it. The leaves fully develop later but you can just see them starting to emerge here and they're very strongly divided. So you've got the three leaflets, three leaflets and each leaflet is almost divided to the base so it has this very strong v-shape to it. Livida means a sort of leaden grey or dull grey and it was originally described like that because the leaves were supposedly of that colour but as you can see uh, most of the leaves are not particularly greyish, they're quite a normal green colour, so it's not entirely clear where that name has come from. Some of the forms of Oxalis livida have uh, quite a scent to them, but you'll also find others where you can't smell uh, anything on the flowers, but it's always worth checking to see if you've got one of the forms that have this lovely uh, rose-like scent to it. They're quite widely spread as a species uh, but mainly 
uh, on the lower slopes, uh, as here in rock cracks or in shale, often rich with iron in there. Here we have Oxalis caprina, and like Oxalis livita, this species too has uh, flowers on the end of a peduncle, several flowers there you can see clustered at the end of a flowering stalk. It differs though quite notably from Oxalis livida by the flower colour which is this pale lilac colour and that's quite consistent in the species though sometimes it becomes almost white. It also has leaves which are much broader and they come out with the flowers there you can see and they're not as deeply divided although they are bilobed it doesn't go much beyond halfway. There is a slight stalk at the base but also most of the leaves and the flowering stalks come out close to ground level. Oxalis caprina is very much a, a plant of waste places. Here we've cleared aliens, grass is coming in, but Oxalis caprina can survive in these places and in fact spreads very easily by the bulbs under the ground. So it is a common species both in the Clane River Mountains and through the Cape itself. You can also tell from Oxalis livida by the lack of hairs on the pedicel and the sepals there. Here we have Oxalis truncatula. Oxalis truncatula is one of the first species to flower, so I had to hunt around to find one that was still in flower, but it has these very typical Oxalis small pink flowers, but very often the flowers will appear before the leaves, but here you can see the leaves are fully developed. Oxalis truncatula can be best distinguished by these two small bracteoles on the pedicel of the flower. And whereas many Oxalis species will have little bracteoles on the flower, they will often be separated by a small distance alternate up the stem. Here, and with some other species in the genus, they appear at an articulation, a little bend joint in the pedicel and they're opposite each other. So that helps to identify Oxalis truncatula but very much easier is, is actually the flowering time and the leaves themselves and the leaves are particularly distinctive in that they're quite hairy and this is especially so as they emerge early and are rolled up and they have these silky, quite often dark purplish undersides to them. And those, as they emerge you can almost just see the silveriness of the hairs before they open out. Truncatula means truncate, a diminutive for truncate, and truncate means that the leaves are sort of cut across at the top, so they're flat across the top. And you can see there's very little indentation or lobing at the end of the leaf there. Here we have Oxalis ecloniana. It's a very typical Oxalis with uh, five pink petals, tube, a uh, single flower on the pedicel, and the very rounded leaves with the three leaflets at the base. It belongs to a group of Oxalis which are quite distinctive but you have to delve into the inside of the oxalis to understand why. When you look at the tube of the oxalis ecloniana, you see it's very cylindrical and narrow. When you take that tube away, the stamens and styles which are inside there are actually being pressed against the side of a tube and therefore when you release them from a tube, the outer ones expand outwards and spread, whereas on a normal oxalis they would continue to be stay upright and erect. But you can identify oxalis ecloniana without dissecting the flower, 
this very thin tube, cylindrical, long cylindrical tube helps. It has these hairy pedicels and calyx. And if you look at the leaves at the base, you'll see that they have a very fine fringe of hairs around the edge. And those characters help you to identify the species, even if you don't delve into the inside to look at what the style and stamens are doing. Here we have Oxalis polyphylla. It's uh, very easy to identify because the leaves are so thin. So here we have the leaves down here and they are in threes but each leaflet is in like a fine, like a grass, so that it's very hard to see and doesn't look much different from a petiole. But each leaf has three leaflets, about as thick as the actual petiole. It gets its name though, polyphylla, from, which means many leaves, because some forms of Oxalis polyphylla have actually five leaflets or even seven leaflets. It's also identifiable because it produces a little stalk and then produces the cluster of leaves and flowers there. Each pedicel has a single flower on it. It's quite widespread in the Clane River Mountains and it particularly likes sort of shallow uh, stony soil, sometimes in rock crevices as well. Usually in pink, but occasionally you'll find white forms of it too. There are some 16 or so species of Oxalis in the Clain River Mountains. We'll only be able to show you a, a selection of those today, partly because that's what's flowering at this time of year. But hopefully it's given you an idea of firstly how to recognise an Oxalis, and then what characters you might look for to identify the species and even to identify some of the species themselves. So we hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the plants around this time of year and we hope you can show you some more on the next walk. Thanks for watching.